Hello, everyone. Uh, we are going to focus on Photoshop today, which is a photo editing uh, program from the Adobe Suite. I look at it as uh, the darkroom for the digital age because many of the tools within Photoshop were uh, techniques and, and approaches within the darkroom with analog photography, and they've been brought into this really powerful uh, software. Uh, what I hope to give you today is a set of tools that uh, will help you just kind of enter into Photoshop, gain some familiarity with it. Uh, we're going to create some pretty interesting popping images. Uh, and what I want to go through today is uh, learning how to bring in files into Photoshop, uh, basic user interface, where everything is, how some of the tools work. And then uh, we'll bring uh, the files out and learn how to export them to upload them to the Google Drive for critique and for uh, final grading. So there's lots of ways to bring uh, files into Photoshop. One is going under uh, the file and just opening a file. The way I usually bring them in is I'll grab a file. Uh, and these, this folder here of Photoshop examples is uh, going to be available in our Google Drive so that you can either follow along or you can just practice with these files uh, before you start taking your own photographs. So another way is to, if you're on a Mac computer, you can bring this and drag it onto the Photoshop icon and it'll load it. And another way is if Photoshop is open to bring it and drop it into this top bar here, and then this is where you store your, your separate images and you can cycle through them. Uh, but I'll close that and I'm gonna close that. So that's uh, uh, one way uh, or three ways to bring it in. Uh, one thing we're gonna be focusing on is working in layers, which is working with multiple um, uh, uh, photographs at once. And so there is a pretty easy way to bring them all in. If you go under File, Scripts, and then load files into stack. And so I organize my files by folder uh, just to keep things nice and easy. If there's like a sequence of photographs that I know that I'm gonna use, I'll put them in a folder and then I'm gonna browse for this folder. Uh, I'm already looking at uh, folder one, so I'm just gonna open that. You'll see that all the files uh, loaded. You can remove them if you want. This attempt to automatically align source images uh, can be useful if you have different sized images, but if you're using your cell phone camera or a DSLR, you will uh, most likely have the same uh, sized images for all of them, so they will load properly. But if you have uh, unusually cropped images, it could be useful to uh, use that. So I'm just gonna import all of these. And you'll see on my right side here, it populated this is the layers section, which we'll get back to. And we have uh, all of these different uh, images. So I'm gonna select the top layer and uh, we'll go over the user interface now. So on the left-hand side here on this bar, you have all the tools that you can use uh, in Photoshop. And uh, so I'm just going to grab this paintbrush tool and you know I can paint on, I can change the color of this and uh, paint directly onto it. Uh, and then another important part is the uh, tool attribute bar up here. So you'll definitely be using this quite a bit. So in this case, uh, one of the most important ones is brush size. So I can decrease this and you'll see my circle got quite a bit smaller. Uh, I can play with the hardness, which can put a feather on it. See how it a little bit more like spray paint. I'm getting rid of both of those. Uh, these are overlay modes. You can play with these. Most likely normal is what you'll use. Opacity can be pretty important. Uh, if we lower opacity, it won't. You can see that a bit of the figure is still coming through. Put this back up to 100. Uh, and those are primarily the things you can play with flow and smoothing, but I usually leave them at the defaults. Uh, on the right hand side, uh, the things that you'll use the most is the color uh, picker. And so you can go through the full color spectrum here. You can pick blacks at one corner, whites at the top, fully saturated images, and then everything in between there. Uh, and then the other thing you'll be using a lot is the layer. Uh, section here. And so the way layers work is whatever's at the top. So if I move this to the top, the image changes and you can slide these images around and reorder them. 
this just uploaded based on uh, the, the file's name. And uh, other important things down here is uh, the new layer, or oh, sorry, this is a new group. Where's the new layer? Let me change the icon. Oh, they did change the icon. Uh, so this little plus sign is the layer. Another way to uh, grab a layer is to grab the, drag it on and it'll duplicate the, the layer, which can be pretty important sometimes. Uh, and then most of these other ones I don't use uh, too often. So it's usually the new layer that you'll need for this project. Uh, some things that students play with is the opacity of the layer. So if I lower the opacity, you'll see that the uh, two images are uh, overlaid on each other. And then I can also play with, this is where you might start using some of these uh, overlay techniques. Uh, so you have like dissolve and overlay and soft light and each one does a little bit uh, different, uh, have, have uh, different properties. Uh, most likely you, you'll use normal, but you might use a few of these other ones and you can test it out really quickly as you just hover above it. It's a quick preview. Uh, that is probably what we need to know for layers. And then coming up to the top here, uh, we won't use all of these, so you can explore them, but the primary ones that we'll use are uh, in edit. Obviously you have your undo and you'll learn those uh, uh, shortcuts pretty quick because you won't be able to go in every single time. Uh, what we're going to look at is uh, fill, which I think is a really powerful tool for disrupting your image really, really quickly. So I'm going to grab this. And if you grab and hold, uh, oh, this isn't it. There we go. If you grab and hold on one of these, you'll see that they actually open up into uh, more. So the one I want to grab here, this is a really powerful tool, is a quick selection tool. It allows you to grab forms pretty easily. And then if you over grab something, you can press uh, on, on a Mac computer, you can press option and actually cut back some of this if it's too much. So I'm gonna maybe grab him, maybe grab a little bit over here. And then this is just a really interesting tool that I discovered at one point. So you go fill, and then if you put it, you can try different things, but if you try content aware, it's going to try to figure out what's going on uh, around this object and then figure out ways to uh, fill that in. So one of the things that you might do is if you had like a lamp post in the middle of a field that you, and you didn't want that, uh, you could grab just the lamp post and uh, use that content to wear and it'll fill it in pretty good. In our case here, we grabbed kind of a strange uh, side of the composition and you'll see here it brought her face in, but it did a pretty good job. Like if I, if I was to grab her face now, if I went Command D to deselect and if I grabbed this area of her face and I did content to wear and you can, you can keep stacking these and, and, uh, and bringing uh, the image even further and further out. Oh. That's interesting. This populated in a, in a very unusual way. Let me go back here. Deselect. Um, oh, I got locked into a different content to where I should have done it a different way. Cancel. Let me try this again. Edit, fill, content to wear. There we go. I grabbed a different one under edit. There's this content to wear fill which uh, brought up this preview menu, which might have more uh, tools in it that you might want to explore. So there I'm, I roughly got out of her face. We've continued this background and now it's getting uh, a little bit more interesting. But that's just, uh, let's go back a little bit, back a bit further. There we go, bring him back in. So now we have the base image. Uh, another thing that will be useful is this transform, scale, rotate, skew. Distort perspective, skew is a pretty powerful tool. You can grab the edges, and it, one thing that I use this a lot for is correcting perspective lines. Like let's say you had a uh, this line that in one of your photographs uh, wasn't following uh, perpendicular to uh, the visual plane, so we can straighten that up. In this image it was straight, uh, but in a lot of images you might want to correct that with skew. Uh, Another one is obviously playing with scale. Let's say you had different size images. Uh, you could scale these to fit the picture plane. Uh, obviously rotate is pretty handy and you can play with some of those. Under images, we have a lot of our uh, color uh, changes here. So we got brightness and contrast. So I can bump up the contrast, uh, bump up the brightness, uh, decrease the brightness. 
But most of the things that are in this adjustments, we're actually going to work with in the camera raw filter. I think it's just a little bit more powerful, a little bit, you have all the tools right in front of you rather than constantly going into the menu and selecting new ones. Uh, these auto tone, auto contrast are kind of hit and miss. Another important one is uh, image size. So when you are exporting your image, you're going to want to get it to a uh, certain size so the file's not too big, it's not too small. Uh, so usually I keep my files around 240 DPI. So this one's gonna blow up the image and upscale it, but then usually I'll, I'll bring this down, like we'll only need maybe uh, the shortest side, maybe 16 inches. And then you can change that. and then it changed. But I'm gonna bring that back so all these images are the same size. Uh, layer, the one thing we're gonna focus on in layer is smart objects, this convert to smart objects, and then the stack mode down here, uh, which we'll get to in a sec. Type, I don't think you'll use. Select, you'll learn these you know, uh, commands, command A, uh, uh, deselect command D. E. These are really important ones to quickly maneuver through. Um, Filter, now filter, this is something that you can spend a lot of time exploring is all of these uh, uh, different kinds of filters that you can put on. They are a little bit uh, heavy handed. So I would be careful with using a lot of these uh, over and over again. Uh, they're kind of mm, a bit easy for this project. And I think you're gonna find your own ways to uh, disrupt the image than using a lot of these, but I definitely would explore them. The important part under here is the camera raw filter. So I'm going to talk a little bit about camera raw. So in this case, it just brought this one image into it. When we get further into this demo, uh, we'll see how we can adjust all of these. Uh, but important things here is uh, color temperature. So you can manually uh, figure out your color temperature like this. When I look at this image on my screen, it's quite warm. Uh, that's the color grading. If you look at her skin, it's a bit, quite a bit more yellowy. So maybe we'll pull out the yellows, bring in uh, some blues, uh, and then maybe warm it up with a little magenta. And uh, you can see by quickly this little Y, the difference here. You see the blues in the light here coming through quite a bit more. And let me jump back there. And then uh, exposure, if you underexpose your image, uh, you can attempt to correct that. Now, if you underexposed it or overexposed it too much, uh, you will lose data and you won't be able to completely pull it. But if you need to brighten the image a little bit, exposure can bring the whole image up. Uh, another important part is, is watching this uh, bar at the top here. At the far side is blacks and at the far, the far uh, right-hand side is whites and everything else falls in between. So as I bring my exposure up, you'll see that the whole image slides that way. And if I bring my exposure down, uh, the whole image uh, goes this way. And you'll see this little red indicator here, which means that it's clipping into blacks, which means that we're losing information. And the same can be applied if I went to, the, to this side with this white indicator at the top here. Uh, we've blown out uh, that image as well. So if you double, if you go too far on any of these, you can just double click on the slider and it'll bring it back. Uh, other ones, contrast, lower contrast, more faded. Uh, higher contrast. I, I like bumping up contrast a little bit to give the image a bit more punch. Shadows just focuses on this region here on the side. So you can just focus on uh, just the side of the shadows. Um, whites will bring the whole image up. White. Uh, oh, highlights here. Highlights will just be like shadows. Just focus on what's in this region here of the bar. Uh, and then blacks bring the whole uh, image all the blacks quite a bit darker. Uh, texture can be interesting. Uh, it can be blown out too much and add some strangeness to the image, which could be interesting. Clarity is another powerful tool. You'll see how it really pops those whites, brings the blacks down. Uh, dehaze is, is great. This scene actually could use a little dehazing. It uh, takes these areas that are a bit more faded, sometimes the sky in an image, uh, sometimes there's a bit too much uh, atmospheric perspective, and you can actually drag some of that out. One that I like using is Vibrancy. So Vibrancy, if you'll see in the blues in the back there, it grabs sort of the mid-tones, flesh tones, skies, uh, green on plant, and you can uh, just grab those. The other option is to bring everything up with saturation. Saturation saturation can get a bit more um, unnatural. And of course, you can desaturate an image and make it uh, black and white. 
Uh, I prefer to play a little bit with vibrancy sometimes just to give the image a little bit of punch. Not too much. You can go overboard and it can become quite an interesting image as well. Uh, so those are the primary tools. There are other tools in here like playing with curves, playing with sharpening, noise reduction. I don't think any of these are going to be overly useful for this project. And then when you're done editing that, you can press OK and it'll apply that filter. Uh, 3D, we won't need to use. View is just, you know, you'll learn the commands for zooming in and out, uh, command plus, command minus, uh, filling screen. Window, uh, this is just different ways of uh, arranging your bar. Okay, so let's get into some of the tools that we can use now. So on this bar, uh, we won't go through every one, but we can move the image around with this one. I'm gonna put it back in place. Uh, we can select the whole image. It's a bit easier just to go uh, Command A to grab everything and then Command D to deselect. That'd be an important one as well. You can cut things out with this lasso tool. So let's say, let's grab a little bit of him. So you can draw with this and make really interesting uh, intuitive shapes. And then we can delete that. And you'll see that the image below then is what's coming through uh, on that. So somebody like Lucas Blalock, who, we're, uh, who you're gonna look at uh, before or after this demo, uh, will use some of these tools very heavy handedly. He looks at Photoshop very much like a, an active drawing tool and uh, he's okay with letting the uh, artifacts of uh, Photoshop uh, not being hidden. And that's something I'm gonna really emphasize and, and hope that everybody picks up on is that Photoshop is obviously a tool that, um, that uh, can hide all of the changes that we're making to it. It's it's really great, uh, you know, for advertising uh, and uh, very serious photography for enhancing images, but without really noticing the tools that are doing it. Lucas Blalock, who's our inspiration for this project, likes having uh, bits of of you know hard tools that. Uh, still exist within the image and act like a, a way of drawing, an archive of the drawing, a way of thinking and, and revealing that thinking. So that's a lasso tool, uh, which you could find quite useful. The tool that I like in here is this quick select uh, because I could just very quickly grab more or less this figure here. And then once again, uh, this applies to a lot of them, but if you hold the option key, or I believe it's the alt key on a PC, uh, you can drag and bring in uh, this and clean it up a little bit and you can spend quite a bit of time uh, fixing these things So we'll get rid of that. Uh, this is your crop tool. Uh, we can obviously crop into this image and we'll uh, Make it smaller So I'm gonna get rid of that uh, This one I don't think we'll need uh, the eyedropper tool is good. This just grabs the uh, Color so if we wanted like a specific color to match like let's say we want to paintbrush on we could grab this really vibrant blue right here, and then we go to our paintbrush tool. Oops, let's bring this back on. And then we could paint uh, that blue that is uh, matching that blue right there. So let's bring some of this back. I'm just gonna back a bit here. Oops. Deselect, okay. So clone stamp, this is gonna be a really, really powerful tool for you. So as soon as you see that I click on clone stamp, the mouse cursor turns to this uh, kind of do not, uh, or do not go or no enter button. So okay. if I clicked on it, it wouldn't do anything. It just gives you this. So we need a source point. point. So if I hold uh, option, oh, it's hidden, sorry. There we go. So if I, Hold option, you're gonna see this little uh, kind of picker come up. So I'm gonna pick maybe this background here. I'm gonna increase my brush size a little bit so we can see it a bit better. And what you'll see is now that I'm hovering over, what I'm doing with the clone stamp, and you'll see where the bottles are, there's a little crosshair. And so it's bringing that information from the crosshair and placing it here. So this is another great way to erase uh, content and fill it with other content. So if you'll see here, and then I'm gonna pick this seat here, and I'm going to follow and just keep getting rid of uh, this figure. And so I keep clicking option to find a new area, and then I just bring that area in, and let's say I want to bring, get out her arm, so I'll pick this area, and then drag that down. 
and keep slowly erasing her. So let me bring her back here. So clone stamp is really great. Clone stamp you can use to uh, completely just very, very uh, precisely remove a figure. I'm just gonna get rid of this layer. There we go. Uh, precisely remove this figure or it can be a fun drawing tool. So I'm gonna select somewhere up in these bottles and I'm just gonna really quickly disrupt uh, her face and so we see some of the activity not completely covering the figure, but it can be quite uh, an interesting drawing tool Let me bring her back in uh, History brush we won't need that the paintbrush tool is probably the one that you'll you'll use quite a bit too uh, You'll see some of this previous student work uh, Had drawings on it, so they would just very intuitively draw. I probably wouldn't want that. I would want more hardness so bring that and then it's very, very graphic, uh, the drawing that you're doing. And you know, there is a certain nice quality about drawing with a mouse or a trackpad, uh, but obviously you can get more uh, precision if you're using a tablet uh, to draw with. Eraser tool is gonna be important. It's gonna reveal uh, the layer below it. So I can cut through this guy. And it's an interesting way because if the image below isn't that much different, you can just disrupt the image in interesting ways and just sort of throw it off a little bit bring all this back uh, gradient tool uh, I can't I've never seen a student use this but you definitely can uh, these tools are gonna be important blur oh brought this tool back let me get rid of that uh, you always have to make sure you're clicked on the right layer if I was clicked on the layer below and I started erasing let me just bring this bit further up sorry erasing you'll see that nothing's happening but if I reveal this you'll see that I was uh, cutting away the image below. So let me go back to that. So uh, the blur tool uh, can be pretty handy, uh, blurring out some faces. The sharpen tool, I, I use these sometimes to uh, create areas of focus. So I might blur out a section and then really try to uh, sharpen out the face. And sometimes you can over sharpen and you'll see that it starts pixelating and uh, and creating too much contrast and really uh, breaking up the image. Other important ones here are dodge and burn. So dodge lightens up areas and you can be very, very specific. So you can focus just on the highlights. Like let's say we wanted these bar, these beams behind here to lighten up and we want to pull them out. And then you'll see when I go over the shadow areas, it's not really doing anything. And then if I wanted to do midtones, which is usually skin tones, uh, I could lighten her up uh, in, professional photography, you might do this to eyes, for instance, you'll brighten the irises up to make them pop a little bit more. Same thing supply here, exposure, uh, you can play with uh, picking the midtones highlights, brush size, hardness, softness, and so on. And then this other tool here, burn is really important. It burns into the image. So let's grab some highlights and let's push these back again. And you can see that we're pushing these back. Uh, pen tool, text, None of these are gonna be overly useful. Okay, so let's get into another technique. This is a technique that uh, I think is a really great way for laying a ground uh, to start using then these tools over. So I'm gonna grab all of these. So I'm gonna hold shift and I'm gonna click on the top one, hold shift, click on the bottom one. I'm gonna grab all of these layers and I'm gonna go under layer, smart objects. I'm gonna convert this to a smart object which brings them all together. And then I can start doing things with them. So I go under smart objects again, and now I have the stack mode revealed. So one of my favorite stack modes, and you'll try out all of these, is uh, maximum. And so it grabs the most luminous areas and brings them to kind of the foreground. And it blends them in this really interesting way. And so very quickly, we went from a very plain image to a very, very uh, fast disrupted image. And then you can keep playing with this. So if I go back, uh, we can play with some other ones here. So smart object, stack mode, uh, entropy. These can all get, oh, this one had too much. Maybe entropy won't work. Let's try, uh, minimum's an interesting one. Here we go. It takes all the blacks and you have this really murky scene uh, to work with, which which one is the very colorful one? I think it's maybe range. 
and you'll see that each one does something different, but uh, they, they are quite interesting to play with. And then you can bring other images into your layer and overlay them, play with opacities. You can take, uh, you can create a ground with this and then bring in more images. Like let's say we'll bring in scripts, load files into stack. Let's bring in a different folder here. Browse. Okay, let's bring in this folder. I've never combined two of these, but we'll give it a try right now. Oh, brought it into a separate document, which is fine. So we can, you can bring these in straight as smart objects as well, which actually could be quite handy. Let me grab this. Never actually combined two separate images before. That crop tool keeps coming up. Let's go on maximum stack mode and then you can play with opacity and bring multiple objects in. The one I want to know is if you combine these stacks together. And then so in this case I used a set of film stills that were just a few seconds apart so a lot of them were very very similar and that's why we still have this central figure but if we were to bring in different images that were you know had different backgrounds and different angles and different lighting and so on they can combine in really interesting ways uh, i spent a lot of time on a series called just a hard rain which you can look at which is a series of uh, of very close in time film still so compositionally they're very similar maybe the cameras moved a little bit maybe the figures moved a little bit but you can through these stack modes create quite a bit of activity out of them which is really really exciting and so we can take that and then we can start going in uh, with our clone stamp hmm, a bit of an error there Maybe we need to rasterize the image. Rasterize just means that it uh, gets compressed into one image layer. So what, let's say once we're done with that, okay, now it's working. So I can grab this section and then I can start playing uh, with this figure and really disrupting and playing quite a bit with it. So that's more or less how to bring files in. This is the general user interface. And then uh, these are some tools that you'll use to uh, you know, be inspired by Lucas Blalock. You can take a look at my Just a Hard Rain series, which uses these techniques as well, and uh, you can apply them. And so the other important part is, I'm just gonna make sure this is just one image. I'm gonna get rid of that. So this is just one rasterized image. So it was a stack of images that we could edit. And when I right clicked on it and I went rasterize layer, it compresses all those into just one image layer now, uh, which allows you to edit it that way. So, uh, once again, image size, I always make sure, so I always like to just have things at 240, and let's say the shortest side should be about 16 inches. Oh, this is centimeters. Move this to inches. There we go. So this is probably going to blow up the image quite a bit. And if I go Command minus, I can zoom out, or Command O. Oops, that's open. Uh, what was it again? Okay, so uh, once we have everything to size and we're done our image, uh, we can go save as. Don't show again. Okay, let's bring this up. So I'm gonna put this on the desktop. So one of the best ways is that while you're still working on a file and you have lots of layers and you have lots of things going, save it as a Photoshop document with layers checked here. And it's it's always checked anyways, but if you uncheck it, it'll just save it as one. Uh, it'll compress everything, rasterize everything. So you save everything as layers. So I can go save, don't show again. And then this way I can come back and keep working on it. When you are submitting though, we're gonna to wanna to go save as. now. I always like to have a uncompressed version. So often I use TIFF, but PNG is another uh, lossless format. So I could save as TIFF. TIFF can keep layers, uh, but I like to make it a little bit smaller. If I want to work with layers, I'm going to use a Photoshop document. So I'll go save as copy, get rid of layers, save. All of this can just stay as it is because this will keep it uh, uncompressed. And I'll go OK. 
So I have the Photoshop document, which is important to have in case I want to go make changes, especially after critique. You can go and make adjustments and not have to start the image all over again. I like to have a uncompressed version, which is a TIFF or a PNG. And then I, for submission, we're going to want a JPEG because JPEG compresses a bit, doesn't allow you to have layers. And then uh, we can go save. And you want the quality to be high here. So let's put it all the way up to 12 maximum. You can see it's only five and a half megabytes, which is a relatively small file. Once you get into TIFFs, you can be in the you know, 100 megabyte range. Uh, same with Photoshop documents. I've had some images that, are, you know, that I use to print, let's say like 44 inches by 132 inches. So we're looking at almost four feet by 11 feet, let's say. And I need to keep those really, really large. Uh, those can be in the gigabytes uh, of range. And then I'll save that. And that's basically it. That's how we bring uh, files in. That's the user interface. That's some of the tools that we'll need for this project. Uh, make sure to check out the Lucas Blalock uh, video uh, that's going to be linked. Make sure to uh, check out uh, uh, my series, which is the Just the Hard Rain, which I will link as well. And you can take a look at some of those techniques. Uh, and then that's how you change the image size and then export uh, in those various formats. Uh, the one that you're going to be submitting for critique is uh, JPEG. Okay, that's it.